Hello everyone, I'm going to do something a little bit different today because it's been requested by me of a few people to do this, a horror recommendation video because I am a tremendous horror movie fan. And we're going to make this an easy one because uh, you can watch all of these movies free with the Tubi app or on your uh, computer or such. Uh, we're going to go through the list right here. We're just going to go through all horror. Uh, we have Jeepers Creepers. Uh, highly recommend it. I love the first one. But I have one question. I mean, uh, spoiler alert just for a few seconds here. How come Justin Long, I mean, other than in the movie Wade In and such, he always gets into the roles of, like, the victim and such? Hello everyone, right now we're going to do something a little bit different because it's been requested of me by quite a few people to do like a horror movie recommendation video, so we're going to do that right now, and I'm on Tubi, which is uh, literally a free app, you can watch uh, all the stuff without even paying a single penny, I mean I'm going to go into stuff for like Hulu, Netflix, all that fun stuff, and jazz as well, but let's get into the depth of this here, Jeepers Creepers was a very very fun movie, I would highly recommend watching this, easily inoculates a lot of my favorite uh Suspense, tense-filled uh, horror movies to watch. And it has Justin Long. Justin Long was also in uh, a particular movie called uh, Walrus uh, with uh, Kevin Smith. And that movie is probably the most tripped-out, creepy movie. I mean, if you thought Jeepers Creepers was creepy, check out the Walrus movie. And uh, however you could watch it. Then we have Jennifer's Body, which is a classic trope film. where essentially, like, uh, think of the movie Life Force. And uh, Jennifer's body here is basically about a, a succubus, a female succubus in the essence. Here we have House of Wax, which is a remake of the Vincent Price movie. And uh, we have Paris Hilton's in this movie. I remember that. Ninth Gate, I watched one time and never really went back to it. And uh, you can see who directed it. Roman Polanski. He's not in the United States. Remember that he left the country for a specific reason. He has never come back to the United States since then. But he directed uh, Ninth Gate. I gave it one shot. Maybe I need to revisit it one day, but um, these first three here were more breezy movies to watch. I mean, Jeffrey's body is completely over the top and silly. House of Wax with Paris Hilton and some interesting effects. I mean, I can't remember if they were like practical effects or special effects, but it is interesting to say the least. And going back to like even like uh, the original actor that was in the uh, movie Gremlins, remember him? He was in a movie about uh, wax what, Waxwork 2, remember that movie where it had, like, Jack the Ripper and all that fun stuff? And then we have Dark Shadows, the TV show, what it has, like, as many episodes as, uh, say, like, the Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, etc. And I have to say, I never really got into soap operas other than, like, uh, Days of Our Lives, which my mom was really, really heavy into. I mean, she got into that. And you watch that show even for, like, three episodes back in the day. Sammy was a diabolical female character, and it was absolutely... It's, Diabolical was watching like uh, some of the crazier movies that came out like in like Wild Things. Think of the movie Wild Things. Sammy was more like a Wild Things type of character. And uh, we'll go down here like uh, didn't see that, didn't see that. I spit on your grave too. I did watch that. I actually do like the I spit on your grave uh, original as well as the remake. I mean, controversial, usually banned in several movies. Uh, and here we have Bones. Uh, with Snoop Dogg. That was a fun, fun horror movie. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I remember listening to uh, the soundtrack to that quite a few times. Uh, Devil's Rejects, one of the best Blu-rays I ever picked up. Just absolutely awesome. Uh, we have Scary tell, uh, scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. And uh, this is a kid's movie. Yes, it's a kid's movie. But it is on par with like Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and all them fun things. I found it very, very entertaining. I saw this in the theater. I don't regret it for a moment. Then, of course, we have uh, Queen of the Damned. This is the movie that I saw like uh, initially when it first came out. And I've gone back and watched it a few times since. It is uh, the same writer, Anne Rice, who did Interview the Vampire. And you might remember Interview the Vampire was supposed to be like a headliner film for Tom Cruise. But it ended up instead being a breakthrough role for Brad Pitt. And it was a great, great movie. And Queen of the Damned holds up really well. Has an incredible metal soundtrack. A great new metal, metal soundtrack. Go down the list here. Uh, what else do we have? We have The Village and Night Shalomans. And my problem with this movie is that if you read the description on the back of the box for the movie, say you're running it at uh, like a video rental store at the time, it completely misleads you on what the twist is. I'm not going to say what the twist is, but 
it irritated me that they mislead you intentionally by having a description for the movie, which is untrue for what the movie really is. That's all I'm going to say. Then we have I Saw the Devil, which is uh, by far one of the top 100 uh, suspense horror movies that I've ever seen. It is an incredible movie. And I'm going to give a little bit of a minor synopsis for this, where basically something uh, horrific happens to this man's uh, wife, woman, girlfriend, etc. And uh, he goes after the person himself and decides to taunt and just take him down in any way conceivable, uh, shamelessly, etc. Even if he has to become a monster himself. And this same director did an incredible job. He actually did a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Johnny Nashville, and Forrest Whitaker called The Last Stand. And uh, it's basically about somebody trying to escape to Mexico, a criminal trying to escape to Mexico. And uh, he basically has to go up against Arnold Schwarzenegger and his generally inept crew of police troop the force. It was a fun, fun thing, so to speak. And then, of course, we have Orphan. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a completely ridiculous movie. And the funny thing about this movie is the twist is identical to the twist of a Law & Order episode. Yes, this is the same as a Law & Order episode converted into a theatrical movie. And I don't know if this happened in real life because a lot of these stories for Law & Order happen in real life as well. Or they're taken from the headlines and such. Hills Have Eyes remake is fun as well as the original 13th Warrior is actually off of a Michael Crichton book called Eaters of the Dead. And I have to say, the book is amazing. I read the book in, like, literally, like, one day. And it's almost in manuscript form. Like, a journalist is traveling with various factions of, like, uh, Vikings, etc. And he goes over their customs. And uh, some of the customs they go over are so interesting. Like, uh, one of them in the book, and I don't think they even depict this in the movie at all, is that in the Viking tradition, uh, the one troop of people that he travels with when anybody wants to have sexual relations with somebody who's unmarried they can go up and uh, tell them they want to have sex with them and if they say no if they reject that person they would punish them so if this woman wants to come up to you and tell you she wants to have sex with you you have to give in to her and this guy's like oh this is all great and everything but then uh, he goes into a little description of how brutal the sex really is where the girl is literally clawing his back and putting bloody claw marks over his back and everything yes that's Eaters of the Dead by Michael Cross who was a doctor turned writer. He did Coma, Invented ER, Jurassic Park, Fear, Congo, etc. All great movies. I love all Michael Crichton adaptations. Of course, like I said, Jurassic Park. And uh, we have Candyman, the original one with Tony Todd. Tony Todd is fun to watch in about everything he's been in, including Wishmaster. And uh, there's a Machete. And uh, not Machete. Uh, Machete is Danny Trio awesome movie. But I'm thinking of Hatchet, which are literally four Hatchet movies. And Tony Todd's in the first Hatchet movie. He's awesome in that. And Final Destination. I mean, he's always awesome in everything he's been in. Uh, let's go down a little bit more. I mean, Creepshow 2 I've seen multiple times. And I remember uh, way, way back, uh, various friends in my life done so many incredible things for me. My friend had a graphic novel of Creepshow 1, the book. And I wanted to see it. I went over his house and uh, his parents were like, we had to go somewhere. And I was so disappointed because I really wanted to read this graphic novel because I love the movie. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll let you read it. Just... Uh, leave it back on my porch or put it in my mailbox in my mail slot when you're done. So I sat out there literally on his doorstep for like an hour and a half reading the entire graphic novel for Creepshow 1, which is an awesome, awesome thing. I loved it, and I was so happy he did that, and exactly he did that one day. And then, of course, we have Grizzly, one of these movies that you'd see like on Soup's uh, host or like Big Chuck and Little John, for those of you who know Ohio and stuff. Just those typical movies where they have like the parody skits and stuff in between commercial breaks and all that. Here we have Faces of Death. I've seen all of these, and um, it's been since proven that most of the footage in these movies has been doctored or faked. But uh, nonetheless, a lot of this is really, really hard to watch footage. Like, I mean, in one of the Faces of the Death movies, they actually have a guy feeding a bear, and he's being filmed by a car close by. He runs out of food, and you can guess what happens. I mean, that's just one of many things. Going down the list here, we have uh, Bait. Uh, this is actually a very, very interesting movie. It starts out like it's a, a heist movie where they're trying like to rob a place, but it actually combines it with the elements of a disaster film where you literally, uh, spoiler alert, notice how it says clean up on L7, where a uh, supermarket floods and they're inside a supermarket with a shark. Yes, really, they're inside a supermarket with a shark. Then we have A House of a Thousand Corpses. I'd recommend watching House of a Thousand Corpses, then Devil's Rejects, because they go right in order. Uh, let's go down the list a little bit more. What else do we have? Uh, the Descent is pretty popular. I wasn't as big into The Descent and Descent 2, because I've seen so many movies like it in the past. But uh, 
I found the movie Frozen to be ridiculous. Uh, they're on these uh, ski lifts, and uh, they're on the last. I mean, the people who are supposed to make sure all the people are off of the ski lifts, but somehow, inevitably, uh, some people get stuck on the ski lifts, and they have to battle the forces of nature and other such things to get down. It's a ridiculous, over-the-top movie worth watching called Frozen. Definitely watch that one. Oh, Silent Rage is awesome. This is where you take Chuck Norris and put him up against Michael Myers or uh, Jason Voorhees. Yes, he goes up against an invincible serial killer. And this invincible serial killer, you've seen in other movies as well. 31 is an awesome movie by Rob Zombie. It's very, very similar to The Running Man, which uh, was done by Richard Bachman, a.k.a. Stephen King, and is also translated into a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. But 31 is like the equivalent of like a horror version of The Running Man. It is awesome. Basically, where these uh, serial killers take innocent victims, throw them into a warehouse, and hunt them down. I mean, most dangerous game style. And they've done so many versions of most dangerous games over the years. One of my absolute favorites, I mean, is probably the pest with John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo is so fun to watch in everything he's been in. Uh, Slither is uh, an interesting movie. I remember having fun watching that one. Uh, definitely an interesting. I remember being pretty gory, like, uh, as well. Then we have uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original uh, and that was a fun, fun movie by Tobe Hooper. He also did, like, a uh, Poltergeist and so many other fun movies over the years. Uh, let's go down the list. Uh, we have Wolf Creek 2. Wolf Creek 1 and 2 are basically based on this true, uh, based on true events where hitchhikers or tourists disappear. And you kind of find out how they disappear according to, like, the philosophy of this movie. That was a fun movie as well. As you can see, we've had so many fun movies here. And then, of course, we have, um... Kevin Bacon's Serve Echoes, which is the direct answer to The Sixth Sense. So if you like The Sixth Sense, uh, the Bruce Willis movie, M. Night Shyamalan, you'll definitely have a chance of liking Kevin Bacon's Serve Echoes. I found it a very, very, very fun movie. We're going to go down the list a little bit more and see what else we have. Some other ones that stand out. Oh, we got the original Wishmaster. We got to watch that just for Tony Todd alone. But I also love Andrew Duvall, who's always fun in everything he's been in. Uh, very, very great movie. <laughs> we got Room for Rent with Lynn Shay. Lynn Shay is like another uh, verifiable horror queen at this point. I've loved her in everything I've ever seen her in. I have not seen this movie yet, but I think I'm going to try watching this after this video. But Room for Rent, Lynn Shay. Can't go wrong with her. And again, she was in uh, the great movie Kingpin with Woody Harrelson and Bill Murray. I mean, she was so fun in the movie. <laughs> okay, uh, what else do we have? We're going to go down the list and just look at ones that really, really stand out that I remember. Oh, look, Run, Bitch, Run. We got to watch that. No, I haven't seen that one. Oh, come on. You can see we got a lot of B-movies as well. Piranha DD. All the Piranha remakes are fun. I love all the Piranha movies. Uh, P2 is actually a fun movie. That's a, uh, where she's stuck in a building with a, a killer that's trying to hunt her down. And uh, I have a funny thing about this where you can take one little concept and end a movie within moments. In this case, she's in a building trapped and trying to do everything she can. And spoiler alert, she tries to break through the windows, all that fun stuff. Why didn't he shot? Why didn't he, uh, she just not hit the fire alarms? Still a fun movie to watch if you want to watch a silly uh, uh, cat and mouse film. And then of course we have V.C. Andrews, Flowers in the Attic. I've seen this movie like probably a hundred plus times. Never gets old. Great, great horror movie. Just horrific. Uh, it's just a very vile classic here. Go down the list here. And I always love how they try to get you, like, uh, hooked in with, like, oh, bad reputation. Then they have, like, the uh, female on the cover there. Sorority Row is a remake. I saw that in the theater, along with a Predators uh, movie. Interesting movie for the time. Uh, Moby Dick 2010. I have not seen that. Uh, Renee O'Connor, though. I think it wasn't Renee O'Connor. I believe she may. I might be wrong. I thought she was in uh, Xena Warrior Princess. Am I wrong? I thought she was her... Uh, the one to travel with her. We have Snoop Dogg, Hood of Horrors. I have not seen that one yet. Uh, we have the original Prana from 1978. I like the original Prana as well as the uh, Prana 2, which really takes things <laughs> to the next level. Let's go down a little bit list here. Oh, Wish Upon. I really enjoyed Wish Upon. If you go on IMDb, people rate it really bad, but I actually found it enjoyable because she literally, every time she wishes for something, she gets the wish, but something awful happens to somebody close by. Think of like pushing daisies where uh, he's able to basically resurrect people for a few seconds at a time. 
But if he does not touch them and put them to death again, then their life is taken by somebody else's life. So it's ridiculous. But Wish Upon, I found a very, very entertaining movie. It's also not too long. It was a fun movie. Uh, Blur, uh, Witch 2, Book of Shadows. You might as well be on acid when you watch this movie because you watch the first hour and 20 minutes of it. The last 10 minutes, throw the entire first hour and 20 minutes away. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Uh, Rosemary's Baby remake. I've not seen that. We're going to go down a list some more. Another Dark Shadows. I mean, like I said, oh, we got uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I've seen this movie multiple times over the years. Oh, here's a true winner. I mean, Train the Busan was awesome. Can't go wrong with that one. Ah, uh, sorry, I was yawning there. And right here, uh, the direct writer that goes up against Stephen King is uh, Dean Arcoons. He's done stuff like The Watchers, Phantoms with uh, Ben Affleck, etc. Even Rose McGowan before she was prominently known and dated like uh, Marilyn Manson, etc. Odd uh, Thomas, you might notice the actor here, uh, God rest his soul, Yelton, uh, Yelchin, uh, who also played uh, McCoy in the Star Trek reboot. Odd uh, Thomas is absolutely awesome. One of the best movies you'll ever see. A great thriller, fantasy, horror, legitimately. Out of all the movies that I've recommended on the list so far, I'd easily put this in the top ten of movies that you'll definitely enjoy. I think it's on Netflix right now. I would watch it again easily, more than once. Uh, we have Warlock 3, and it looks like... Uh, I saw the first two in the... Oh, it's actually Warlock 2 Armageddon. I love the first two. I believe they made, like, a third one. I don't remember if they had the original actor, but the first Warlock, one and two, I love both of these movies. I found them very, very highly entertaining. Going back to them, they were a little bit hokey with their uh, uh, special effects, but I still love them entirely. Uh, going back down the list here, Masters of Horror. This is uh, the best horror TV show you could ever watch. Each episode is by a different horror uh, director. And, uh... I believe even one of the episodes is directed by uh, the person who did Saw. I mean, I would highly recommend watching seasons one and two. And uh, one of the uh, open board games called Jennifer is actually based off an episode of Masters of Horror, where a guy basically, spoiler finds this uh, female who has a deformation of her face and body over by a dumpster being beaten up by another person. So she takes this a uh, woman into his care and finds out there's something very, very special about her. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. It is ridiculous. If you really want to know, uh, just ask in the comments and maybe I can blanket it. But uh, it's called Jennifer and it is a really, really twisty, crazy episode. But Masters of Horror is right in the accolades of the best TV horror shows I've ever seen, including Black Mirror, Twilight Zone, Hour Limits, Remakes, all them fun things. But Masters of Horror and, uh, of course, the other movie I recommend, Odd Thomas. Two high primo recommendations here. Uh, let's go down the list here. What else do we have? Uh, you might notice uh, Jeffrey Dahmer here. You might notice the actor here. Went on to be in the Avengers movies. <laughs> yes, this is one of his first roles. Uh, Midnight Meat Train. Fantastic movie ma based off of uh, Clyde Barker's story. Earlier, Bradley Cooper film. This movie was limited release. I'm so glad that my theater played this before they went into uh, direct video release, and I bought this on Blu-ray the moment it came out. Midnight Meat Train, one of the best Clive Barker stories, along with, of course, uh, Candyman. Don't forget, Clive Barker also did Candyman. Uh, Lord of Illusions is probably my absolute favorite of his, but yes, Candyman is by Clive Barker, also did Midnight Meat Train. Uh, what else do we have? Cooties. That was a ridiculous movie. It takes the essence of Cooties and makes it a real thing for a horror movie. Uh, going down the list here, uh, Ted Bundy. This actually is better. This is a better version of Ted Bundy than all the current ones that came out. This is far better. I remember uh, this video store was closing down. And uh, I offered this guy like uh, $70 to let me just take a crap load of movies home. I took probably like 100 movies and just watched them over the course of the next month or two. And then I gave them back to the guy. So that was awesome of him to do this. Then we have the Hellraiser uh, first one. Also Clyde Barker. And uh, The Gate. The Gate is an awesome movie. This is a great, great... It's a kid's movie. Where it opens... Uh, there's Basically, a kid finds this like hole in the back of his yard. And these monsters from hell start coming out of it. I've seen this so many times. And there's a Gate 2 uh, as well. I like the original Gate the most. But Gate 2 is pretty fun as well. And this goes into like the movie similar to Troll. And Troll 2, etc. Okay.